I'm Sharon Batters, and you are listening to the Daily Treasure podcast produced by Mark Inc. Ministries, and we are traveling together on our journey to Easter with the women of the resurrection. Today's devotional is called, Tell Her to Help Me. And today's treasure is from Luke chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Over the next few days, I'm going to be sharing with you excerpts from my book, Treasures of Encouragement, and you can get the book at any bookstore, uh, Treasures of Encouragement, where you can read these passages in context, but I hope that these words will help give us a fresh look at Martha. Tears must have stung Martha's eyes as she helped the servants pick up empty bowls. Her mind raced, searching for the reason her plans for an extraordinary evening with the master had dissolved into a disaster. Jesus and his disciples had needed a place of solitude, and their acceptance of Martha's invitation gave her the opportunity to do what she did best, serve. The aroma of stewed lamb filled the house when they arrived. Bread hot off the coals filled the baskets. Just a few more details and all would be ready. But then everything fell apart. Martha could not be everywhere at once and Mary, her sister, was not helping. Instead, she was sitting at Jesus' feet enjoying his company. I'd like to hear his words too, Martha may have muttered, but someone has to fix the meal. Jesus doesn't even notice how much I'm doing. This is ridiculous. Confident that her indignation was righteous, Martha puts her thoughts into words. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Without acknowledging Martha's need for help, Jesus defended Mary's choice, adding confusion and regret to the anger in Martha's soul. In Luke 10, we read, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. What did Jesus mean? Martha was doing what was expected of her and what she believed was right. Why didn't Jesus appreciate it? As an Orthodox Jewish woman, Martha probably had traditional views of her identity, and she seems to believe that her sister should hold those views as well. Martha expected Jesus to support her in re-educating Mary. Instead, Jesus confronted Martha with a fundamental but overlooked truth. Martha wanted Jesus to acknowledge the importance of her service by demanding that Mary behave in the same way. But instead, Jesus defends Mary, saying that she had chosen wisely, that it was important to seize every opportunity to deepen her relationship with him. Contemporary thinking and rabbinic teaching evidently had shaped Martha's view of herself. Josephus, a contemporary of Paul, wrote, The woman is inferior to the man in every way. Rabbis did not expect women to learn or to understand religious teaching. Martha apparently accepted this view, which explains her confusion when Jesus said that her sister had made the better choice. He suggested that Martha's activities, though not inherently bad, nevertheless robbed her of something far more precious. Martha, by limiting her service to actions that made her comfortable and by demanding that others do likewise, was in danger of making an idol of her traditional role. Jesus, while not discouraging her service, tried to help her focus on something far more important. Jesus encouraged Martha to see in a new way, to focus on what had previously been hidden to her. To do so, she would have to stop looking at herself and begin exercising weak and seldom used spiritual muscles. Jesus uses events in our lives to show us new things about ourselves. Within a year after our son Mark's death, our daughter Heidi married Greg, our son Dan started college, and our oldest son Chuck married Melanie. Suddenly, I was preparing meals for two instead of six. Every trip to the grocery store reminded me of my changing life. The next two years were to have been Mark's special time as our youngest child. He would have been the center of our attention. My husband and I planned to use the time to prepare for the imminent empty nest. 
Mark's sudden death robbed us of our preparation time and hurled me into an unfamiliar and unwelcome role change. I was forced to re-examine my identity as a woman. Through Mark's death, God put me at a frightening crossroad. Would passion for God or the loss of my son become the framework of my identity? Unable to make decisions and impatient with mindless chatter, I retreated from leadership in local women's ministry. My inability to function in previous roles raised questions concerning my purpose. Who was I? How should I fill my days? How could I? How would I? Learning to articulate my ultimate identity as God's disciple rather than as a mother forced me to find new ways of responding to my redemption. Like the excruciating pain of learning to walk again after an injury, every step caused anguish, but my spiritual health demanded that I face the challenge. Friends, the scriptures do not name Martha as a woman at the cross, but I personally have no doubt she was part of the women afar off. Her encounters with Jesus helped her understand her identity as a child of God and transformed her way of viewing not only her service, but the opportunity to sit at the feet of Jesus with her sister. However, as we will see tomorrow, just like us, Martha needed more than one personal encounter with Jesus. We will watch as he starts preparing her for his death, but also his resurrection. Oh, Father, our hearts really do go out to Martha. We are all about doing, doing, doing. When you call us to be about being, When busyness overwhelms us, remind us of those precious words you spoke to Martha. You are busy about so many things. It's time to choose the better part. Sit at my feet a while and be energized by my love for you. Well, friends, we are getting closer to that celebration of the incredible gift of resurrection power, of redemption, of forgiveness of sins, of power over death, our greatest enemy. And it is such a privilege to be sharing these moments with you as an opportunity to help turn our hearts deeper and deeper into the love that Jesus has for us. Well, that is meaningless to us in our everyday lives unless we recognize that Jesus promises he will never leave us or forsake us and tells us that he will break the chains of darkness around us, even though he promises us that we will also have trouble. He has overcome the trouble. I have the opportunity of talking with people who have experienced some of the darkest, most profound pains that anyone could experience. We talk on our Help and Hope podcast about redemption stories, but our guests are very raw and very honest because they don't want any moment of their lives to be lost. And they want them to be seen as an opportunity to offer hope to that one person hanging on to life by their fingernails. Well, for the, this month in March, we are reaching back into our archives and we are sharing again some of the Help and Hope podcast that have the most listens. And the one I want to introduce you to this week is called Disability, Death, Guilt, and Grief. Wow, those are heavy, heavy topics, aren't they? And in this moving and sometimes emotional conversation, I get to talk to Susanna Musser and her counselor, Heidi Scott, about the sudden accidental death of Susanna's adopted son, Tommy. Susanna and her husband, Joe, and their entire family welcomed Tommy into their home, even though he had severe disabilities. Tommy quickly experienced unconditional love. But friends, God often calls us to hard places that are much more difficult than we expected. Through circumstances no one could have imagined, Tommy died. Susanna, with the help of her counselor, Heidi, shares the story of her family, her passion for adoption of children with special needs, and the enormous struggle she experienced in trying to reconcile Tommy's death while carrying self-imposed guilt no parent should experience. This conversation will not only encourage others in similar places, but it is going to give you a renewed understanding of the burdens that some parents bear and how to help them. You don't want to miss this conversation. 
please make sure you go to markinc.org, M-A-R-K-I-N-C.org, and look for the conversation, the Help and Hope podcast, on that is called Disability, Death, Guilt, and Grief. That's Disability, Death, Guilt, and Grief. I'm Sharon Betters. Thanks so much for joining us, and I look forward to being with you tomorrow.